Surprising as it may be, there is much more than twerk and kittens on Instagram. You can also find some great artworks, and in this video, we'll explain why this, this, and this are not an example. Even if you are an insider to the art world, it would be no surprise that you have never heard of the term zombie formalism. And if you see the history of art from the viewpoint of philosophy and groundbreaking movements, you haven't missed a big thing. However, if your viewpoint is focused on understanding how economic circumstances are able to influence the work to the point of producing an art that can itself be reflective of the broader context in which we live, then you probably want to give it a try. The idea was first introduced by Jerry Saltz in his article Zombies on the Walls. Why does so much abstraction look the same? Where well, he points out how the market has ever more now the upper hand in pointing out the successful authors, many of whose stories are diluted, meaningless, and recycled. What a paradox. But the term zombie formalism itself was coined by the critic Walter Robinson in his 2014 article Flipping and the Rise of Zombie Formalism, where he describes it as being, quote, formalism because this art involves a straightforward, reductive, essentialist method of making a painting, and zombie because it brings back to life the discarded aesthetics of Clement Greenberg. Clement Greenberg was one of the most renowned critics of the 20th century. Focused on so-called formal purity obtained when a painting itself is the only thing deemed relevant, Greenberg saw the work of Jackson Pollock and his dripping technique as a sort of coolman to the history of painting. The subject that had protagonized the avant-garde movements should be suppressed in favor of the pure visual sensation. Yet however, the limited scope of experimentation in abstract expressionism and its purest approach burns itself out parallel to a favoring of works with a conceptual dimension that however were already taking the scene since decades before Pollock's Street paintings reached their fame. This was the dawn of Greenberg's history of art. Some formalists went on, however, imitating the golden days of abstract expressionist principles without extending or commenting on any of their established ideas, comfortable with a mere decorative nature that makes them feel as easily art fairs and modern apartment living rooms. But some formalism was mostly not characterized by its visual aspects, but rather by the speculative nature of the investments in its artists. It would be naive to pretend that this speculative side is a separate characteristic of the art market of zombie formalism, but the extent to which it took place has seen no precedent in the world. Investors would happily buy artworks for low prices just to inflate this soon after at auction. On the article The Toxic Legacy of Zombie Formalism, Part 1, How an Unhinged Economy has Found a New World of Depth Aesthetics, Chris Wiley stated that zombie formalism always moved between two poles. On the one side, those who painted unpreoccupied, with an artwork seeming more the painter's clothes than a consciously produced painting, and those that work on degraded color fields, quote, as if someone had left, say, a Barton Newman out in the rain. Wiley also points out in his article how zombie formalism became a new genre, focused on satisfying the tastes, and mostly the needs, of today's new enriched class, as he calls it, a new kind of court painting, and signals how the force of these works mostly devoid of content rather than purely visual, came with attention-grabbing processes, using fire extinguishers or rubbing the works on the floor, even being the term process-based abstract painting used to describe them. This is the same process we may find when looking for works on Instagram or TikTok, with a clever procedural engineering to give an impression of originality and geniusness. Going back to the works of Jerry Saltz, all this painting employs a similar vocabulary of smudges, stains, spray paint, flecks, spills, splotches, almost monochromatic peels, silk screening or stenciling. Edge to edge, geometric or biomorphic composition is the rigueur, as are irregular grids, lattice and moire patterns, ovular shapes and stripes with maybe some collage. Many times stretcher bars play a part. Yet the history of zombie formalism is one of tragedy. For almost four years, beginning somewhere before 2011, the art market's insatiable appetite for zombie formalism faded out in a glimpse by the fall of 2014, with works previously sold for hundreds of thousands of dollars condemned to a past lot. Zombies had returned to the graveyard, or so we thought. 
Many of the first generation zombies, such as Tauba Auerbach, Oscar Murillo, or Lucien Smith and Jacob Kasai, managed to survive their own zombie apocalypse by means of a renewed line of work, many times focusing their work on installations or video art. Though the rise of visually impacting processes and their massive expansion through social media relegate the work to a background, this is perhaps the most recognizable artworks that have come to dominate the public sphere via social media. There is a growing trend, however, in today's zombies that take them to produce how-to-like videos in a manner that is more reminiscent of cake-making tutorials and food porn videos than any conscious artistic creation. Yet the visual recycling, the sameness pervades, and zombies rise up, once again, back to life.